Uh, my name is Corporal Stoddard. Uh, I'm a 0621 transmission systems operator. So, so this this uh, CPX was mainly a uh, proof of concept. We we're testing on new gear that we haven't used before, trying to figure out new ways to utilize it, and uh, finding the most efficient way to use that gear. So we're we're making plans, testing them out, see if if this is the right plan. If that's not the right plan, we find a different method. What the ant hill represents is obviously it's on a smaller scale for the CPX, but what it what it would represent in a real life scenario would be. It could be from half a mile away to the actual COC, and basically with all this comm equipment, it has um, it emits frequencies that the enemy might be able to track or pick up. So, so what we do is um, we we have it far away from the COC. That way, um, if the if the uh, CO sorry major are in the COC and the enemy does pick up. Um, They'll, they'll attack this uh, anthill instead of the actual CLC. So we, basically we set up all our equipment in the anthill. Everything that we're using to communicate with the other units, that would be in the anthill, uh, this Tampa, that's what pulls services from the satellite for all the data and networking services. So that would be um, in the anthill. And then we would run it through cables like this or Cat5 into the actual CLC so they can pull those services into the COC. Well, basically, since we have everything remoted in the COC, there'd be a, a radio operator on, on um, shift in the COC, and they would be communicating with the uh, people from the other units. What we did with the Bravo node was we took a JLTV and we escorted Workhorse 6, Workhorse 9 to Camp Schwab, so that was the movement. So what we needed to do is provide tactical comms along that movement. So, so we don't have full capabilities to do every single net on the move, so we, we strapped on what we could. We used, uh, utilized HF, VHF, and IW to have tactical comms on the move. Okay, so HF stands for High Frequency Waveform. Um, it's it's um, more reliable across long distances. VHF is very high frequency. It's, it's good for line of sight communications, which is what we would use like in a in a closer, uh, closer quarters, and then integrated waveform. That's IW. It's a type of satcom communications. So that that is also really a very, um, what's the word? Very reliable across any distance, pretty much. All right. So my name is Joseph Olivares. I'm Lance Corporal in the United States Marine Corps, and my MOS is a 1171 a wire support technician. And I've done a lot of cross training on electricians and uh, generating operations. Okay. All right. So my main role here in CPX or Jungle Workhorse is to learn the job of an electrician in 1141. And so my main role is to get power from the generators into everywhere on our field op and keep that consistently running without dropping. And so I got this job opportunity by just uh, allowing myself to kind of go with the flow, ask a lot of questions, and I'm very open to learning new jobs, and my higher-ups seen that, and they're allowing me avenues of advancement to actually learn what other jobs do and how important it is. Do I see it? This is a very good, uh, like, build out to be on, because with all these positions and everything constantly changing, like the Marines have to be able to adapt and even if you don't like know something, you have others there with experience to teach you something and it helps you grow as a individual. So when we set up our generators, we go, we make sure all of our cables are connected nice and tight. Everything's running nice and neatly where no one's gonna trip on it. Everything's organized. If there's an issue like a cable gets pulled or something, you could see exactly where the problem is and you could track down like where, like what happened and if there's like a, like something shuts down, like say one of the generators ran out of fuel, we have a, what's called a microgrid set up. So if one generator goes down, like if there's any issue with it, another generator will pick up and uh, start making power in place of that one without losing power to the main operations in this, inside the COC. And so our jobs as an electrician is to go around, make sure everything still has fuel, all the connections and everything are still stable and that there's power gain 
uh, where it needs to be without any disruption, as well as checking our AC units, what we call our booze, and make sure that there's no debris or anything that got sucked into the intakes or anything like that, which could also mess up the, electric the electricity. So collaboration is key. If you don't have like, if you're not communicating with everyone to your left and right, it makes things go by a lot slower. It can make a task that just takes a few minutes, take like an hour. So it's really good to communicate and everything, make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if something happens or you have to go move on to the next thing, you let someone know so they know where you're at. First Lieutenant Ziv, I'm currently serving as a watch officer for the Combat Operations Center. It's my responsibility to ensure the smooth functioning of the watch floor and the continuous flow of information to the commander. So what this does is it enables him to make a decision based on a complete, up-to-date assessment of the battle space. We're out here at the Jungle Warfare Training Center executing Jungle Workhorse, which is a command post exercise for CLR-3 to practice our command and control capabilities while serving as a logistics command element and where required the MAGTAF command element. So we're out here at Jungle Warfare Training Center executing Jungle Workhorse. It's a command post exercise for CLR-3 to refine our capabilities to conduct command and control as a logistics command element and where required the MAGTAF command element. So it's important for us not just to ensure a smooth functioning watch floor and a streamlined COC, but as well to stay mobile. So we're practicing here transferring command and control from node to node and ensuring a rapid teardown and reestablishment of COC operations to enable ourselves to stay light, agile, and mobile, degrading the enemy's ability to target us and ensuring success in the future operating environment. So as we execute Jungle Workhorse, we're establishing a COC by more traditional means uh, that many people have seen before, establishing tents, utilities, and a very in-depth comm structure here. We're also rehearsing our ability to transfer that over uh, to a Bravo node, a jump COC, that's consisted of JLTVs and a much more expeditionary COC environment. Within that, we're refining, transitioning back and forth, so as we tear down our alpha node, our more traditional uh, tent-based COC, transferring that control to our jump COC, and then reestablishing that alpha node as quickly as possible, this whole time ensuring that we never have a loss of command and control in the environment. So the focus on the light footprint really centers around our jump COC, and that, that allows us to rapidly transition our control to that jump COC that's more mobile, degrading the enemy's ability to target us, so we can tear down and reestablish our COC in different locations rapidly uh, without allowing the enemy the ability to target us. So as we transfer over, we split our staff, uh, sending a reduced footprint with the Bravo node, but still enough to maintain that control uh, with that Bravo node. Slightly reduced comm footprint, but again, still enough to maintain that command and control long enough and conduct effective operations before we can reestablish the Alpha node with the full suite of capabilities. In a real scenario, we could see this as we go out and establish our alpha node and we get some type of intel uh, that the enemy's targeting us or we've been here too long and don't even want to afford the enemy the ability to do that. So what we'll do is we'll push out that Bravo node, uh, that jump COC consisting of JLTVs, and that will allow us to establish command and control somewhere else while we can tear down uh, our primary alpha node and reestablish it somewhere else where the enemy isn't expecting us.